Praise the Lord and happy Sunday. Let's get ready to worship.
Praise the Lord and glory to God. Well, greetings and thank you for joining us today at Greater Works Ministries Online Church. So we are excited about everything that is going on with the ministry. We're continuing on in so many areas. Thank you for just being a not even just a constituent, but a well-wisher and a faithful, dedicated member or whoever you are to us, we appreciate you, we love you, and we are so glad that you're tuning in, you're subscribing, you're looking us up on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere where we are. So it's our goal to continue to supply you with the Word of God and to give you an opportunity to worship with us. Turn your Bibles, if you will, please, to Psalm 71. We're going to Psalm 71 this morning, the book of praises, the Tehillah Psalms. David wrote about 75 of them. We have all of these Psalms in here that come to encourage us and to, <clears throat> in a time like this, I believe we need more encouragement now than ever before. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, In you, O Lord, I have put my trust and confidently taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge and a sheltering stronghold to which I may continually come. You have given the commandment to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O oh my God, from the hand of the wicked and the godless, from the grasp of the unrighteous and ruthless man. And I'm reading from the... Uh, amplified okay for you are my hope oh lord god you are my trust and the source of my confidence from my youth upon you have i relied and been sustained from my birth you are he who took me from my mother's womb and you have been a benefactor from that day my praise is continually to you and then I want to go over to verses 14 and 15. But as for me, I will wait and hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and of your deeds of salvation all day long, for their number is more than I know. Praise God for this word. You know, as I was just considering the time that we are in and how everything around us, all of the news, the media, all the voices in the air, there's so many voices. Sometimes, you know, you have to get your time away just so you can hear God clearly and turn the television off for a while just to get in the presence of Almighty God so that you can hear clearly and continue to keep your joy to continue to keep yourself sustained in the word of God, to continue to keep yourself built up and established in him and to remain hopeful and faith in the faithfulness of God and what he has promised and said that he will do for us. In a time like this that we are in, uh, it is easy to be discouraged. It is easy not only to be discouraged, but you remember in the scripture when they asked them to please sing for us a song. And he said, they said in Psalm uh, 137, we can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land. And they hung their harps up. They hung their harps and they said, we will not defile that which is sacred unto God and entertain you. We're not going to sing. And how can we sing? Our hearts are heavy. Our hearts are burdened down. We have become captive. We have become ensnared. And so therefore we don't feel that we can sing the goodness of of the Lord's song to you. But in a time like this, we're reminded in so many places in the Bible to sing, to sing again, to sing another song, not to stop singing, but to continuously giving God praise. So here, this Psalm writer, which is, it may be David, he says, I put my trust and my hope in you. Don't let me be confused. And there's a lot of confusion going on in the world right now, in the atmosphere. You can just feel it. It's clattering, it's chattering. It's a lot of lies and a lot of noise. But as long as our hope remains in the one who gives all hope to all mankind, 
the one who is the keeper of us all, the one who we can look to and believe to do what he said he would do, because he is not a man that he should lie. He said, I put my trust and my confidence in you. You are my refuge. Don't never let me be confused or be put to shame. Your righteousness is what delivers me and rescues me. And he goes on to talk to God and says, please just be my rock. Be my refuge in a sheltering stronghold in a time like this, that I may continually come unto you. You know, there is a place that we can continue to go to. We continue to seek God and to ask for his wisdom and his guidance in this hour and to ask for his instruction pertaining to our very lives. And this is a place where we can find a shelter in a refuge like Psalm 91 tells us. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. So it doesn't matter what it looks like around us. It doesn't matter what comes against us. He says the weapons may be formed, but they're not of me. They may be formed, but guess what? They will not prosper. Hallelujah. So he goes on to say, you are my rock and my fortress. And he says, he says, Deliver me from the grasp of the, the ruthless man, the unrighteous man, the godless person, the one that does not uh, walk in your way, the one who was pursuing after my life. And it's probably David, Psalm 71, because you remember how Saul was seeking after him to kill him because of his envy and his jealousy towards him that he was now the new king. And he says, Lord, I trust in you and I put my confidence in you. You know, some trust in chariots and some can trust in man and some can trust in money and some can trust in their fame and their riches and all that. But it is better to have assurance. Insurance is good, but you know what it said. It's better to have assurance alongside of your insurance. So he says, I put my confidence in you and I've done this from my youth. You know, God is faithful. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he is also concerned. Yes, we're concerned about abortion and everything going on in the land about the womb, but he's also concerned about us from the womb all the way to the tomb. He's concerned not only everybody's, you know, oh, abortion, abortion. Yes, but what about the man walking down the street that's innocent and that is being pointed out and being targeted? He's concerned about him too, from the womb to the tomb. Glory to God. He says, from my very birth, oh God, and you are the one who took me from my mother's womb and you have been my benefactor because he daily loads us with benefits. He is the one. A benefactor is just somebody that makes a way and provides and pays either by help or by money, by some means of a resource to help a situation or help one in their lives. He says, you have been my benefactor. And truly, this is the Lord. This is one of his characteristics because because he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the one who provides for us. Glory to God. He said, my praise is continually to you. Yes, we're looking right now. Are we voting Democrat? Are we voting Republican? What is our mind to do in this season? We're afraid in so many areas. We want to see things go in certain ways, but I trust and I believe that God has never made a mistake and he knows what he's doing at all times. And he also said that he would send his word out. His word is going to go out on assignment and his word is going to go and accomplish what he said it to do and will not return into him void. You know what that means? When he send that word out, that word is not going to come back and say, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, God, but, um, I didn't do what you told me to do and I missed the assignment. Oh, no, 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 that's not going to happen. That word is going to go out and work. It's going to work. He said, I work a work in your day that you wouldn't even believe it if it were told you. So we can't get dismayed and get all caught up on everything that we see and allow it to make us discouraged in this hour. We're going to have to continuously hope and trust in God because he is not a man that he should lie. And not only that, he is a God that can represent everything that he says in his word. Glory to God. So he goes on and he says, do not abandon me when my strength fails and I feel weak. And I'm sure there are some of us in this season that we're going through right now that feel a little strengthless, feel like we're a little overwhelmed, feel like we're even weak. But the word of God tells us not to be weary in well-doing because in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Do not faint. That's why we have to continue to pray. He said man ought to always pray and not faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. This is not the time nor the place to give up now.
because this is not your place of destiny. He said, for my enemies have spoken against me and they watched for my life and they've been consulting together. Now, when they join up together against you, you know, they trying to double up against you. But he says here, he says, but God has abandoned him, saying God has abandoned him, pursue and seize him for there is no one to rescue him. Mm -mm -mm. But there is a great army. There's a great cloud of witnesses. There are angels and can't round about us to keep us in all of our ways. Goodness and mercy is following us. The hedge of protection is about us and the devil is underneath of our feet. We got it going on. We got it going on. So he said, come rescue me. But then as he goes on and he remembers all of these things and he says, let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek and injure me. Well, that's an imprecatory prayer. David was known for praying imprecatory prayers. He would pray against his enemy to the enemy's next generation and all the kids and everybody else to come. But that is not the position that we take because the scripture tells us also to pray for them that despitefully use you. We still have a mind and a responsibility to pray. We still have to pray because I know that there's some anger that can be building up inside of us. I know that there's some frustration that can be building up inside of us because of all of the injustice that we see and everything we feel and how it just seems to be working totally against us. But you have to continue to believe God. He says, but as for me, I don't know about nobody else. As for me, I can only speak like J Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, but as for me, I will wait and hope continually. Don't mean I'm not going to put my hand to the plow or get involved. He says, and I will praise you yet more and more. He said, I'm going to give you a yet praise. <laughs> I'm going to give you a yet praise. In spite of everything that is going on, I'm going to give you a yet praise. And what I like about the yet praise is, you know, the word gives us so many instances where there have been times where people were going through situations and they couldn't see their way out throughout the Psalms. Many times David, and he's telling his story in here, but then he turns around and he says a but, but. Yet and but are conjunctions. They are words that turn the situation around. What I like about yet is yet can be an adverb or yet can be a conjunction. Either one just means yet or now. It means until now and still or nevertheless. So he's saying right here with this one, he says, but nevertheless, as for me, what am I going to do? I'm going to hope continually and I will yet praise you. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness. This is what I'm going to talk about. My mouth shall tell of your deeds and your salvation all the day long, for their number is more than I know. And if we could consider all the days of our lives that we have lived up until this point, somebody wrote a song and said, I won't complain. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. I'm surely this can be our testimony today that in spite of everything that we see going on and the frustration of the racial uh, injustice and uh, the pandemic with the COVID-19, the novel, because it's new and it's not been known before, and even what they're projecting to come in October for it to kick up again and how it has already spiked again in another country, Europe, I believe it is, is seeing another uprising and how we are bracing ourselves and fearful to get the flu shot and just so many things that we are thinking in ourselves and trying to prepare ourselves for that which may come or may not come. What do we need to do? We need to yet. Don't forget to give God the praise because somewhere in there we can find ourselves in a melancholy state, we can find ourselves low on the of joy that we have on the inside. We can find ourselves looking like God is the problem, looking like he gets the blame. You know, God can get the blame for a whole lot of things. God can get to have to take the rap a lot of times for a whole lot of stuff that's going on in the world. And people look like, God, what are you doing? Or God is not there. Or But God is with us. It can look like Emmanuel is not with us, but he promised in his word that he would never leave us and he would never forsake us yet praise him anyhow in spite of everything that you feel 
right now in this environment that we are living in, it's a very hostile environment. Don't forget to give God the praise because that just proves that he is your benefactor. He's the person who provides for you and causes help to come. Don't hang up your harps. Unlike those in Psalm 137, what I like about Paul and Silas, when they were locked up and they were in prison and injustice was being done to them, they continued to sing. They were locked up in jail, but they were singing. They were singing praises all so much until the place shook where they were and hey they were set free hallelujah so we want to be concerned today about the praise that we're giving unto God because Psalms tells us that it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises to his name O most high that we might not be able to enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise but we can still give thanks unto his holy name and to sing of his loving kindness and to sing of his justice and to sing praises unto the most high God and to know that it is he that gives us joy. And of course, the devil wants to come and steal your joy. You do know that, don't you? So give praise unto God for the Lord is our strength and the Lord is our song. It is he who has become our salvation. This is our God and we will praise him as he has given instruction for us to do. He said he brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light so we could show forth the praises of him. That means spit out, spit out your mouth, open up your mouth and give God a praise in the midst of everything that seems negative. And then when you can say something negative, turn it around and just give God a praise. When you could say something negative and something demeaning or derogative, just turn it into a praise and watch the atmosphere change where you are. Second Samuel says, therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises unto your name. So we want to give God the praise for all that he is still doing, even though we can't see it. We can't let the circumstance dis, uh, distort our vision. We can't let the circumstance distort our view. We can't let the circumstance desert, distort where we are going or what we believe by God, because we already read the end of the book. We know that we are victorious. We know that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God. We know that our God reigns. We know that we will reign with him eternally and we will have eternal life. We know that we are the victors and not the victims. So in the midst of everything going on, I remember hearing Bishop Jake say one time, he said, if God had told me everything I have to go through or to get to where I am, he said, I'd have said, oh no, I ain't doing that because we don't see everything. Sometimes it's not written in view for us to be able to see. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. So ask yourself, how am I walking today? Am I walking with the faith to believe God continually, to say that he will do what he said he would do, to believe that he is the Lord thy God of all flesh? Hallelujah! And nothing is too hard for him. Woo! Glory, glory, glory. I'm just getting excited thinking about the goodness of the Lord and what I know he can do and who he is. I believe it's all lining up for the end time return of Jesus Christ. And regardless of what it looks like and regardless of what it sounds like, I continuously hope and trust in the Lord and I'm giving him a yet praise. I will yet praise and magnify his holy name. Because why? Because he's good. He's good all the time, uh-huh, and all the time God is good. Yes, 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 so through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips and give thanks to his name. And Psalm 96 and 1 says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all ye earth. Glory to God. Just imagine if we could get everybody together. Woo, this would be a good place for some musicians right here, huh? You know, we like the good old Hammond and we like the drums and the, every other instrument in there because we could get, hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. I will yet praise you, oh God. Glory to God. I will give your name glory because you are worthy in spite of it all, through it all, and because of it all. You deserve the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I have not given up on God. Testify against me. Somewhere it says in there, go ahead, speak and testify against me and tell me what I have done wrong. <laughs> can't testify against him. I can, I'm like the writer here. He says, from my youth, when I was a child trusting in you, oh God, 
even from my birth, you who took me from my mother's womb, you have been my benefactor. Mm. You have been my provider. You have been my keeper. You have been my sustainer. You're the one that kept me when my back was against a wall. You're the one that brought me out of dry, dark places. You're the one that set my foot upon a rock to stay. You're the one that lifted up my head. Hallelujah. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Uh, Woo, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Who can stand against him? Woo, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. That's a good place to clap your hands right there. <laughs> yeah, clapping your hands is like slapping the devil in his face. Clap your hands. is a form of prayer, you know. If my people which were called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face and pray. Hallelujah. It's a time for prayer and it's a time for praise. Pick up your mighty weapons of praise and use them. Come on, let's just start out a revival of praise. Let's start a revival of praise. You just pray all day and praise and give God glory and continuously keep lifting up his name and magnifying him and louding him and exalting him and extolling him and telling him how good he is and telling him how marvelous he is and continuously give him the glory. Woo! I don't know about you, but I feel like giving God the glory. Yes, the glory, oh, the glory. Said I feel like giving God the glory. He has been so good to me. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. So therefore, I'm just encouraging you today. Don't forget to praise. Don't hang up your harps and sit down melancholy and just go through this. The people at Thessalonica and Thessalonica sat down on the curve, if you will, and just sat there and just waited for the return of Jesus. And Paul came along and told him, get up from here. <laughs> get up. David said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Keep hope alive is what Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive. It's a time for us to keep our hope alive and to just feel, build ourselves up on our most holy faith and encourage yourself. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh-huh. Sometimes you have to speak victory during the test. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do because it might not look like it's faring in your direction for victory. But if you believe by what you see, then you are not walking by faith. You have to continuously trust God's word down to the last tittle, the last drop. God's word is true. So yet praise in the midst of everything. Don't hang up your harps. Give God the glory that is due his name. It's now time for offering, if you could repeat after me. Because I tithe and God is faithful to his word, there's provision in my house. I'm a cheerful giver, a seed sower, and a harvest reaper. My harvest includes houses, lands, checks in the mail, open doors and promotions, business opportunities, money in my hands, debts canceled, inheritances, and more. My seed is physical and financial, so I expect a physical and a financial harvest. According to the word of God, as long as there remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So I give in faith, expecting my harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. You can also give your tithe and offering to Zell, and the handle is 562-659-4127. The handle for Cash App is Greater Works LA. And you can also send your tithing to P.O. Box 11744, Carson, California, 90749. Let's rest the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who gave, Lord, and those who couldn't. And we also thank you in advance, Lord, because we know you're going to provide. We thank you for using us in your kingdom, Lord, and we ask that you continue to use us so we can help those in agony and pain. We bless this offering now in Jesus' name. Amen.